Today we're going to look into different ways to ignite thermite. We're going to go with the standard sparklers first, just uh, as the control. And we're going to try a little bit of gasoline. We're going to try a 9 volt battery. We're going to try a standard AC battery out of the wall. And we're going to try aluminum powder. Let's see how it goes. So we're going to start with the sparkler just as a control. This is our regular method. As you can see that was fairly quick and worked well. That's what we expect when we do this. Wow, cool. Got a nice little chunk of molten iron stuck to the end of the sparkler wire. Very cool. Just kind of push that off to the side a little bit. Okay, now we've got a little pool of gasoline in here. I don't know if there's enough. Let's give it a try. Well, Definitely the gasoline's in there and it's burning, but it doesn't... The little crackling you hear is probably the aluminum powder, but it's not getting enough to actually cause it to ignite. This is almost as exciting as watching paint dry. It's interesting, all that burning right around the thermite, yet the thermite itself is not lighting. I guess we can say gasoline is not a good ignition source for thermite. We're going to add a sparkler to it to see if that will help light off the thermite. Hopefully it will get hot enough. Might have to help it along some. Goes. I missed the actual explosion. Okay, so gasoline is definitely off, off the list. Won't be using that anymore. Okay, so we're going to try the aluminum powder next. I've got the thermite there, made a little divot for it. Aluminum is one of the prime ingredients of thermite, one of the two ingredients of thermite, but it also burns on its own. And I think we might be able to actually ignite the thermite just by letting the powder. But what do I know? You can see there's some sparks coming up. The problem with aluminum is it quickly becomes aluminum oxide. Okay, we can't do that. Let's move on to our next step, which will be electricity. Just take this nine volt battery and put it on either side of it. Not going down at the 
center. And there should be nine volts going through there, or thereabouts, depending on the strength of the battery. All right, let's try the big boys. Okay, now we're gonna plug in some regular electricity and see how it goes. Go ahead. Don't worry about any popping noise. It's possible we blew a breaker as soon as we touched this. I expected the thermite to conduct the electricity. Didn't seem to do a good job of that. Go ahead and unplug it. Okay, so out of the methods we tried, the one that seemed to work the best is what we've been using, which is the sparkler. I do have another method I want to try, but I don't have what I need here. To do it. it it's on its way though so that should be coming soon in the meantime let's light off the rest of the uh, thermite that we had set up for today so we can go out with a flash of fire there it is wow i'm amazed when i wake up after that and don't have a sunburn or a thermite burn i don't want a thermite burn thermite burn seems bad Chunks of molten metal right there. Well, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this and learned a little something with me. I do have some project ideas where I'll be using the thermite for what it's generally used for, which is welding. Never done it before, but looking forward to it. And I'll post it right here. Thank you for watching.